Yes, good afternoon, everyone. It's a beautiful afternoon to join together. How is everyone? Wonderful. So we are very eager to jump right in, but we also want everyone to tune into this moment now. So if you could center yourselves into this moment now, going within and just finding that peaceful center within you, remembering that the only moment or the only time that truly is, is now. Nothing else exists. There is nothing else but now. We are here with you now as you are here with us now. And we want to explain to you that living in the now is what you really want because as we said, the only time that is, is now. And we want you to experience peace. Peace can truly only be felt now. Now we have been talking about how life is love, love is life, and you are one with life itself, which means you are one with love itself. But we also know, of course, that perhaps this is simply right now just an intellectual understanding. Do you agree? Or do you feel it? 100% oneness all the time. Obviously, if you were, you wouldn't be in this physical plane or this illusion. So we'd like to help you to feel more and more the oneness that truly is. And as we were saying, the only time that is, is this moment now. And that's where it is felt. And the more that you decide to tune in to the now moment, the more you will experience what we are speaking of, the oneness. And so we have also been telling you that to take time throughout your day to be aware of the now moment more and more. The reason why we say this is because the more that you focus into the now moment, the more the now becomes every moment. Does this make sense to everyone? So, practicing this is important. In fact, your awakening is dependent upon your practice. Otherwise, you are apt to fall back asleep. But you want to have a stable awakening, meaning you wake up and you continue moving forward toward the wholeness that you truly are, which is now. We bring it back to now because you are not separate from the wholeness of the wholeness of the whole except in thought, except in thinking otherwise, except in thinking other than what is truly real. What is truly real is now. And we want you to experience now, 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 and now, and continue to do now throughout your experience. That is waking up. Waking up is awareness. Waking up is love. Waking up is now. Now we have also talked a lot about the importance of you including yourself in the whole of all that is, because without you including yourself, Something is missing. And what that is, is your awareness of yourself in totality. And without your awareness of it, you cannot experience it. It just is a concept somewhere out there. Somewhere out there in the ether, some thought, some idea 
that has yet to be manifested in your experience. But we want you to know that it isn't out there. It is right here and right now. And it is important to just pay attention to it, you see. So we want to come back to the now again. So as you go forward in your day, if you find yourself trailing off, you bring your mind back to now. You can even just have that realization, wow, I have wandered off or my mind has gone elsewhere. Well then, it must be it's time to tune into now. It must be that I need to step back and be now. Does this make sense to everyone? And as we were saying, that the wholeness of you can only be experienced when you include yourself in it. So it can't be someone else that you are witnessing, although you can witness and that can inspire, but you can't see someone else being in the now and hold yourself a part of that, meaning outside of that. Does this make sense? You want to include yourself in the experience of you. We want you to really learn how to include yourself. And how do you do that? Something we've been telling a lot and talking a lot about, but we were speaking with the channel about this, is really your own inner dialogue. Does this make sense? Because your world is only really you in your mind. These are your ideas, your own thoughts, and etc. But how can you feel the love if you are not loving toward yourself, you see? We have also said that giving and receiving are one. That means as you give, so too shall you receive. Now, if you are not giving to yourself love, then you are extending out of lack. Does this make sense? Sometimes it can help you to recognize love by loving others. And sometimes that's quite easy for you to love another. But we want you to recognize the other is also yourself. So you have to also include the self-love. We were saying to the channel, with self-love, then your cup runneth over and it is a natural extension of love because you have all of this to give, you see. It is nurtured and cultured within yourself so that it is ready to be shared with everyone. Although in the sharing of love, period, amplifies it and strengthens it but we want you to include yourself in the sharing of love. We are very big proponents of self-love, of self-kindness, of self-appreciation. You can appreciate all of everything, but if you are not appreciating yourself, something is missing. Does this make sense? You really want to nurture the appreciation and include yourself in it. So, also another thing, don't think about it, but feel it. Just feel it. We want you to do more feeling than thinking because sometimes thinking can become quite a block. When you think too much, where have you gone? We want you to feel things out because your feeling, your emotions, how you feel gives you direction. And it's easy to feel something than it is to think about it. Does this make sense to everyone? You can think about everything, but without the feeling, you don't really know which way to turn. So tune into yourself. Feel things out. 
So, and as always, we can go on and on and on, and we will. But it seems to be there is a question or something of this nature. Anything going on? Yes. I feel predominantly in the center of my head behind my eyes, a strong vibration. What is your insight into that? It is the energy of you, you see. Now, you all have heard this before. You are not your physical bodies, but you are energy. You are vibration itself. So as you are waking up, to yourself at times it will present itself in a physical sensation so that is part of your coming to awareness of there being more than just the physical so yes is it best to put attention on it or allow it just allow. allow it notice it and love it you want to love it send it love Send it love and nurture it and just say, yes, I see you. Show me more. Show me more. Yes. Absolutely. Show me my whole body. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Does this answer your question? Yes. Wonderful. One. Wonderful. Opening my heart. Yes. Give me some insight into that. Love, love, love. That's that like? unconditional. It feels like clarity. It feels like an absolute unconditional peace. It feels like wholeness. That nothing can disturb it at all. There is nothing but this love and it is everything and all encompassing. That is the only way to explain that feeling in words. But it is absolutely an experience as well. So to open your heart to love, see only love. That means no matter where you lay your eyes or no matter where you lay your mind, see love and only love meaning set your intentions to only see love and everything else is but a distraction so wonderful does this answer your question beautiful we okay, thank you um we will just reminded to hold the microphone up. <laughs> Wonderful. Hi there. Hello. <laughs> um, have, have we been um, other terrestrial beings or have we always been human beings? Like, tr like, Things that are capable of conscious, whatever we have that have makes you, me. Are you asking, have, have you been a dog? No, I'm asking, have I been an alien? Have you been any? Thank you. Yes. We figured that that's what you were saying. Yeah. But if you're saying, have I been other terrestrial? Other terrestrial could be a, a bird. Other, right, yeah. Right, I mean, something like terrestrial. That. You mean extraterrestrial. Have yes. you been extraterrestrial? How does it feel? Um. I, yeah, I don't know. It kind of feels like, yeah, I have been. Then That's you have. Thing, yeah. Then you have. Okay. I have another question. Okay. Octurians, are there friendlies that are able to help us Arcturians do this? Octurians are friendlies who are able to help you. And we can ask, are they, are they, because are they physical, are they more able to help us or? We wouldn't quite, well, the only way we can say they are other than your physical. Does this make sense? Oh. Meaning there is no way to explain that. Does this make sense? Yes, they are 
form. Yes, they have a form. Not that they are a form. They have a form. They are also in a dream. In which form is? Does this make sense? Yes. Are they conscious in the dream oh, or they're as unconscious as us? They're, they're absolutely conscious. They're absolutely conscious. So they're playing in form as conscious beings. And in fact, they are here and they are aware of all of you and they are trying to help you. Yes. Cool. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That answers the question, really. Yeah. They are aware of you and there are multiple others who are aware of you who are also trying to egg you along. Hello. Can Absolutely. they elevate energies like in a room for us and help us? Or is there, there what? They can help with that, yes. But know that that is not separate from you. That you are with them in that. In fact, what they talk about is oneness. You see, that's something beautiful to really re realize. They are one with you. You are one with them. So you are elevating the energy here, if they are here, you see, elevating the energy. Everyone is elevating the energy together. We want you to realize that nothing and no one is really outside of you. It is all in you. We have talked about this and we'll just say this, angels, angels. Did you know that they are also part of you? They are not outside of you. They are not separate beings floating around. They are actually you. Does this make sense? Um, yes. I know. I think maybe that's why I could believe in extraterrestrial. Like I might be able to allow to see that more than an angel. It might be. My, right. I'm, I believe in energy. I, I feel that your energy, you are definitely very elevated energy like I feel like it just being here feels like it's doing something to my cells you know at a cellular level just and it being is near this. it is it really is because the whole of all of your being and this goes for everyone is responding to an elevated state and it is open you see it is open to elevating itself because it knows that it is not separate. It recognizes oneness and entrains right to it, you see. Then there becomes no difference between your energy elevated, our energy elevated, or anyone who seems to be out there's energy elevated. Together you elevate, you see. It is not a separate endeavor. Yeah. Quantum mechanics. Yes, it is quantum. In fact, it really is quantum. If you want to put a label on this, it really is quantum. So we thank you. Very good to see you. Wonderful, Wonderful to see you. Presence. Wonderful to be with you. We went to a large Christian music concert last night, and uh, the love and the joy and the beautiful energy all around us was so powerful. Um, I invited in spirit, love and light for that event, but I knew it was, it was already redundant. There. Yes. Because it was already there, but my guides, I figured, would enjoy themselves <laughs> in case they were missed out. Um, what does this look like to spirit? Well, the funny thing is, they aren't missing it at all, whether you invite them or not. <laughs> but it's good for your own awareness that you invite them in to your experience. Otherwise, you might not be aware of them enjoying it, you see. But they naturally enjoy. See, you have to realize, we don't join you in your misery. We do not join you in your suffering. We are one with you in your elevated state, which is your natural state, which is who you really are. So that heightened emotion and energy that you were feeling in this concert is you you see and is all of your guides because we're telling you all of your guides are all of you and with, with our vision or with our sight we don't really have the what is it what's the vision of it in our 
if it, if it can be put into words. Well, physical sight can't really see it. Although some can see energy with a physical eye, but really it's not the physical eye that's seeing it. We want you to understand that too. It seems to be coming through the physical eye, physical eye brain relationship, but it really is not. It's really an opening to your energetic eye, your true sight, you see, which is really beyond physical. And there is no way in which to explain it. And so, as you understand, your physical eyes are simply a substitute for the true sight that is beyond, of course, the physical body. So, and can I ask another question? Absolutely. You're talking about it and it led right into another question I was going to talk about. Um, it said in the Course in Miracles that um, at, this, at its best, the earth is a pale reflection of heaven. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? It is a pale reflection, yes. It is. Because, as we were saying, again, your physical cannot perceive heaven. Does this make sense? Although, as you wake up, you begin to be aware of it more and more, and you begin to feel it more and more, but it does not end up being a solely physical interpretation. Does this make sense? I just, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of like the oneness, how it feels. Vision, I guess, doesn't explain it because I'm talking about how it feels more. Real vision, which is what, was being, what is being said in the Course, real vision is that healed perception, which is the perception that is truth, you see. Yes. And that is real vision. So thank you. We thank you as well. I have an online question. This huge overflowing love light that your blazing presence is bringing to our awareness feels so deeply, profoundly real and good, like eternal home, heavenly, expansive, truly loving, joyful, holy, supremely creative, ecstatic, spontaneous flow. As all is ever one in this ever flowing infinite now, is this communication of the seeming you to the seeming us, the eternal aspect of the one who knows itself as it truly is, giving energetic awakening, awakening, dispelling love light to momentarily sleeping aspects of itself. Thank you all infinitely for your constant, awesome, clarifying, loving presence. We love these questions. They're always so beautifully stated. And guess what the answer always is? Yes. Yes. Actually, yes, because it reaches you on all levels and that does help you in your awakening. Does this make sense? Meaning, spirit will use all ways in which you give to spirit to use for your awakening that you hand over. Does this make sense? So what we want to say about that is any aspect of your life that you are willing to give over to the spirits you use for your awakening, it will use. And the, the wonderful thing about this is, and we want you to understand this too, spirit wants to use your life for your awakening, not someone else's life, because that is saying that you are separate, you see. But using your very own life because it is you who is awakening. Does this make sense to everyone? And so, as we have said before, all symbols that you give to the Holy Spirit, it will use to help you in your awakening, to bring you home. It is this because it is something you can recognize, that you can understand and incorporate into your mind and into your expression and awareness. Thank you. This is all perfect. Wonderful. <laughs> I 
And truly, you all are perfect. Hello. Hello. Um, yes, I've been battling with this for a little while because I've been having um, memory issues. Both my husband and I were trying to remind each other of all these 3D things. And I'm finding it a little bit harder to mem remember things from the past. I'm having more trouble remembering things for the future. And in this 3D world, when you have appointments and you need to live in this world and be successful, so speak, so you can, you know, make a living, live life, and feel like you can cope with it. I find it very difficult to not remember a few days ahead of time or a few days in the past. So here's the thing. Past is done and over with. So that's... Now, we want you to realize that you have to love life. Love your experience here right now, not try to run away from it. Does this make sense? Yes. Meaning we understand, yes, sometimes with awakening, it can seem to be that you want to escape. Just want to get the hell out of here. You see? But what you really want to do is embrace the whole of you and your life and elevate your life, meaning elevate the way you think about your life. Does this make sense? So if you are feeling, well, I have decided to be uplifted about all of this, it will be imprinted in your memory. If you have a positive emotion about, let's say, an appointment, this is a wonderful ex opportunity to experience joining with someone in love, meaning beyond the body. Does this make sense? And it doesn't mean that you have to do anything. It just means that you're going to show up as the love as you are. Does this make sense? And that very thought, that very intention will keep it in your mind. Much greater than, oh man, I have this appointment. Really not looking forward to it. Oh, these things, these things are such a drag. The mind says, okay, out with the old. You see, but what you want to do is become more present in your experience. That's what we were talking about being in the now, you see. That means bringing the now into every experience so that you are present and aware of the presence of now, of you, of all that is. Does this make sense? Uh, yeah, so it's, um, it sounds like I'm being very fear-based, worried about if I miss something. Yes, indeed. In fact, yes. Oh, I forgot again and putting myself down or the other person's disappointed. Beautiful to bring this up because this is what we were talking about, your inner dialogue. So you want to elevate your dialogue with yourself. If you're going to look down on yourself for missing an appointment, you forgot again, lighten up. Don't see it with such gravity. It's not the end of the world. You haven't committed murder. You have not committed an atrocity. There really is nothing there. Sometimes these slip your mind. You see, there's nothing wrong with that. Have better self-talk. See it this way, too. You forget an appointment. I love myself. Can you try that out? Oh, I forgot it again. That must be a call for love. I must be asking for love. Well, who better than me to love myself? Give that a shot. Thank you. Yes. Who are we talking to? What do you mean? In self-talk. Everyone. That's a beautiful question because we were, yes, we were telling the channel, did you realize your self-talk that you're saying to yourself is you are talking to all that is. You're talking to the whole of everything. But we also were explaining to the channel that source is not going to hear the negativity. It's not aware of it because it only sees you as your perfect self that it created. Does that make sense? And it doesn't step out of itself to join you in your sorrow. And so it doesn't see your sorrow, but you don't get to experience the joy 
when you leave yourself out of it. So when you are talking to yourself and talking down to yourself, really, truly, you are talking to no one. And we say it that way because the false identity is no one, really. Who really is, who is all that is, is all that is uplifted, you see. All that just naturally is so. It's not that it went from down here to up here, it just stays here. And this is just a way to explain. Really, there is no space. But just to show, if you were looking at it that way, it is high above. Does this make sense? Yet, right here and now. So the one you are talking to with your self-talk, why don't you look at it as you are talking to all that is? Would I really say this? to everyone. Would I really talk to an innocent child this way? Does this make sense? Can you see yourself that way? Would you tell a toddler the things that you say to yourself sometimes? Does this make sense? And so if you could see yourself that way, wouldn't you just want to give love? So keep that in mind. Anytime you find yourself talking down to yourself or negatively about yourself, would I really say this to a toddler? Would I really say this to anyone else? And who is it anyway that I'm talking to? And it seems that we're really, when we're in the now in the experience we don't have to talk to it absolutely there is no talking to it because it just is no, it, there's isness that that's right being. so is it all ego when we talk to ourselves or is part of our self the all that is is the source well, how does it feel usually it's ego if it feels, if it's a voice that is saying things of a negative nature, then it is the false identity that's talking. And so you can say things like, who is this who is talking? And then you'll find silence because you find nobody's talking. Does this make sense? No, normally it talks back. You know, <laughs> that, because the part of me that talks back, it'll, it'll let me, it'll create a dialogue well not in a good way then you let it go yeah yes I think I'm continuing this question but I see I have my higher self and my ego and then there's the me that's listening to you and and responding well to this energy here and that's what I'm trying to do who's that? I like that person. I want that. Well, first of all, that's not a person. Okay, well, I want that. <laughs> How are we to label it? There is no label. Oh, there is no. no label. But that's a good thing. So, here you are in your mind. What you're telling your mind is, there is my higher self. There is the me who's enjoying this energy. And then there's the ego self who is saying all this stuff. Well, the best thing to do is see only love rather than separation. Instead of dividing yourself into all these different parts, can you just see love? Yes, you do. But it is a noble practice. And it is one that you will benefit from absolutely. Because this will, as we said, spill over naturally into all of your interactions and all of your experiences. You. You're welcome. Thank you. So I heard someone mention spiritual seasons. 
Is that a thing? Like no, 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 no. Okay, we're you not, know why? Not like at because the it end seems of to be is there's there is this and that and there's something to get to when everything is now. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Yeah. The only reason why we say no is because why would you see anything but now? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> what it was was like like cycles on earth like is the like are we hatching do you know what i mean where we do like the little we're cooking in here we're about to like ding or at the end of it or we understand. No, this is just this is the time of awakening right this is the time of awakening now no matter what you call it the season of spiritual season <laughs> the season of Enlightenment, the season of lift offedness, the season of pop goes the weasel. It doesn't matter. This is the time of awakening. And you are waking up. Everybody, even the most asleep right now, are little by little, getting as your mind awakens, so too does everything else. It's a hundred monkey. Yes, it is. And remember, it is your mind. And if your mind isn't waking up, then no minds are waking up. Thank you. We thank you as well. Now, of course, many are waking up, but you want to be part of that awakening. You want to see yourself as one with that awakening, that awakening being this awakening, being your awakening, being all awakening. That's what you want. That's what everyone wants. That's what we want for you. That's really what we want for you. And that's really what you want for you. We are aware you're, you're done with all of this. So be done with it. And how do you be done with it? But look to love. Tidy up your inner dialogue, as we were saying. Does this make sense? Tidy up your outlook on life and your outlook on the world. We really want you to see this this way as well. Tidy up your outlook on the world, meaning let go of your held opinions about the world. Instead, decide to see only love, meaning decide to extend only love. That's really what we mean. Because as you extend only love, then love will simply be what shows up and you will recognize what is not part of love but you will not give it any time does this make sense meaning you notice it is false because that which is not love is false so we hope that answers you. yes okay I what is the hundred and forty four thousand do you know what I'm talking about? If there's some number given, specific number. Sometimes numbers are okay, but really, still, numbers are part of the illusion. Okay. So it can either help or it can hinder. If, if you're counting on your hands or you've got to make sure that you get 144 something, then you're saying that I am not there yet. <clears throat> Oh, no, I didn't know what it was referring to in the Bible. It talks about 140, like it gives some certain number. I was just curious if that number. If it helps you, if it helps you. What does it mean? Yes, it might actually hinder because you're thinking about something as though it is not already here and now. Does this make sense? Yes. So, just be now. Yes, absolutely. That is always the answer. <laughs> just be now. If the mind wants to go down that way, I think that I'll just be now. Because in the now, everything is, you see. There is no distance to travel, no time to wait for. It just simply is. And that is peace. That's where you experience love, you see the unconditional love. 
the love that we were speaking of earlier, that clarity, that total peace, that spaciousness, that's unconditional love, you see. That can only be experienced when you are in now. That's why we were saying, spend more time in the now. Every moment that you can, return your mind to now until all moments are now. And that just is your experience. Thank you. I've been practicing for a couple of years with trying to, well, for only about one year, practicing to hand over consciously to the Holy Spirit as I have difficulties come up. Is it a sign that I'm having some success when I drive? I don't seem to have as many. I, I mean, I have people that come in randomly that trigger a, a thought, but more often they're loving thoughts or it's a short-term negative one I will catch and hand over and send love instead. Absolutely, that's progress. It just seems like it. You know, I just went on a long trip, and I drove for some of the time, and I didn't really have a lot. That's a good thing. So that's a measurement of what your surroundings are showing you is a measurement. It's not a measurement. It's not a measurement. Well, it's just evidence. It's evidence right. that it's working. Indication that yes. I'm yeah, having so Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Wonderful, yes. Because the only time that trials continue to come up is because you have not learned it. Does this make sense? Yeah. But once you have learned it, it ceases to present itself in your experience. So learn and learn well. And I follow up, you just made me think of, it was one of the recent lessons in, in the course, was that if you could specifically identify it, to be released, then you're doing a better job of that. Like if I'm saying that white car that just passed me, I send that, you know, to be specific, to release that specific connection I had. Is that is that more helpful? Or is it just a general? A general, a general. Overthink. Yes, you don't want to overthink. As we were saying, we want you to feel more and think less. Thank you. So turn to how you feel, feel it out, you see. If it works for you that way, then yes. If it doesn't, then no. Does this make sense? Yeah, it's always sure. on the individual basis. We would never say this works for everyone 100%. Does this make sense? Now, some things do work for everyone 100%. But these situations, as we said, as you hand everything over to the Holy Spirit, it will use your life as a way to take, to bring you home, to wake you up, not someone else's life. Thank you. Thank you. And as we were saying, remember, the reason why we say that is because you have to recognize this interaction. And the only way for you to really recognize this is through your own symbols. Does this make sense? Of course, you can see something and understand it, but for it to resonate and feel in you, you really want it to be something you can recognize. Does this make sense to everyone? Wonderful. Are there any other questions? Yes. Um, I was listening to um, uh, a reading of a lecture that Neville Goddard gave in 1967, and it was called God is Light. And he um, had a very profound experience, and he realized that there was only his mind. And so, I mean, he just had a profound experience of the one mind. So... Um, and I mean, it's one of those lectures that you have to listen to like over and over again to really get it. And um, just, I know we've talked about this before, but I mean, when there's one mind, what are we? What are we? One mind. 
I can visualize us all being, you know, just that there's the one mind and that there's just this little bit of stuff out here that thinks it's me. And, but it just, I mean, why? <laughs> yes, why? That's what you are recognizing there. Why? Why not return to the one mind? Really? There is nothing really but the one mind in true reality. And that's what you want to return to. Does this make sense? So it isn't about figuring out why you did this or why you seem to have done this. Does this make sense? But it is to forgive yourself for even the thought that you could have done anything. And remember that you remain changeless and unaffected by this illusion. Does this make sense? You remain one in the one mind of God. So did that one mind let some of itself go? Is that what it... What it didn't it let some of itself go because you've never been let go. You have never really left. It seems like you have. So it seems like the one mind said, okay, I'll let you go. But we want you to even let that go because you have never left. You are still there. It's only a thought that you think that you can be anything or anywhere but the one mind. We know that this is something that can only be experienced. It's an experiential experience, not an intellectual pursuit. Does this make sense? So you will never receive the intellectual understanding of it because there is no intellectual understanding of the one mind. It is an experience. Does this make sense? Could it be likened to like a big mainframe computer and like networks, little computers that are where little PCs all attached to one network, like, could that be a way for us to kind of if, understand? If that helps you, yes. If that helps you, yes. If that helps you to, to fathom it, yes. Yes. We were going to say, instead of it let you go and let you separate yourself because it didn't really, meaning it has no, it doesn't, it was not part of separation. Does this make sense? It had no part in separation but it is all allowing so it allows these expressions to seem to occur because it knows that there is nothing but itself you see and no matter what seems to happen in a dream you are unaffected we want you to remember this is a dream nothing that happens in a dream can touch you as you have had dreams in your life in your night dreams here, when you wake up, you're the same as you were when you were in that dream. You were same, well, actually, you were the same as you were when you fell asleep, when you wake back up, you see. So nothing in the dream did anything to you. Does this make sense? So you were waking up. So, but does this make sense to you? Yes. yes. Remember, the one mind knows only of itself, and it will never not know of itself. Because it's impossible to know anything other than itself. So that's why it doesn't join you in your misery. It doesn't join you in your pain, because it knows only of itself, and itself would never bring pain to itself. It loves itself too much to let anything but itself be there. Does this make sense? And we want you to realize you can do this very thing with yourself by loving yourself, by being kind to yourself, 
and being kind to your brothers and sisters, being kind in your thoughts about everyone, including yourself, about the world, about anything that you may lay your physical eyes upon or your awareness on. You want to extend only love. And really practice this. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. We appreciate this interaction with all of you. We feel we have all mightily gone the distance today. If there ever were a distance to travel, which there is not, there is only here and there is only now. Now, as always, you are blessed and we love you without end. You are eternal beings. You are eternal love itself. Embrace this in yourself. There's a hand up over there. Yes. We will take one more question. But then we have to wrap up. Oh, my question. Wow. So are you saying life is a state of consciousness? And is that what take no thought in the Bible mean? Consciousness is not thinking. Consciousness is a state of awareness of the truth. Thank you. You're welcome, yes. Life is eternal. Read the first part again. So are you saying life is a state of consciousness? Life is beyond even consciousness. It's is a difficult thing to explain, but consciousness is in life. Does this make sense? Yes. Remember, life is one with you. Life is eternal. Life is. Thanks. Life is everything, really real life and we are talking about life with a capital L but remember this the life that you are living is life you are life there is no death does this make sense yes wonderful and as we said we have come to the end and we thank you for joining with us again. As always, you are loved eternally and you are eternity itself. And that eternity is love and all is well. We thank you as always. Namaste.